we may be in the in re, in reverse. I forget when when we always recorded in the studio. I put you on the right and me on the left. Oh, I'm I'm on your right. Yeah, but the recorder is pointed at us as if you were facing us. <laughs> Which means that in the recording, you're going to be more on the left, and I'm going to be more on the right. Oh, okay. Do you think my listeners care? I don't know. Okay. It's probably the kind of thing that only someone like me notices instantly and is troubled by. <laughs> oh, yeah, like me in the airhead. <coughs> oh, yeah, talk about the airhead. This is important content. <sighs> oh, this is critical. So we opened these airheads we got for, for movie night. These are candies, little candy strips. These are from, um, we got them from... Sam's Club? Sam's Club. And yeah. they, uh, these particular variety, they're called Airhead Extreme. Yes. And, um... It's rainbow stripes. Yes. Except it's not a rainbow. How so, Grace? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> there's only five colors. Is that right? In, uh, yeah, there's only five colors. That's weird. And then second of all, they're out of order. It's red, orange, yellow, blue, then green. So that's why you were screaming at the candy. You're out of order. You're out of order. There's actually no screaming in the whole damn. You damn dirty ape. No, oh, what's no, sorry, the? What's what, how's it go? The whole. It you is, goddamn right. I'm out of or something. This is a Jack Nicholson film with Tom Cruise. Right? Oh, oh, right, right. That movie, the the military drama movie. I forget yeah. what it's called. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't actually screaming, but yes. No, you weren't screaming. Uh, that that is true. I uh, did notice this, and we'll just say that it was a problem. It's a problem. You know, the uh, the other thing that was a problem was that when I opened up the package, mm -hmm. the little candy strips were sitting in these little plastic trays wrapped in plastic, mm. and um, the little strips are about two inches shorter than the tray. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so, so you can get your, you know, get, for kids with meatier hands, they can get their fingers. Uh, okay, they, if even if they have no hands, they could just stick their face, face in, there. in there and like slide around. <sighs> no, it's just to cheat you out of even more. But it's this this particular little cheat is so blatant that I was oh, right. like, huh. kind of startled. Usually, like the little tray would be small. You know, like right. They have a small tray, small package. But they make the package look as big as possible. Ding. And the candy as small as possible, and they don't even care <laughs> anymore. If you they don't care anymore, you you're can pissed see. off when you see. You can this. know. Well, it's like the t potato chips. Well, actually, they did do some PR on that. Yeah. That, you know, that it settles in 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 delivery. Well, like as it ships, it settles down, so it appears to be uh, less potato chips in the back and hold. But it actually, if you check the weight, yes. it, the weight is accurate. It is. It is actually true that they do settle somewhat um, yes which is what we now get so <clears throat> this is, don't settle really no this is a movie night and this means that this is the one day a week where we serve the kids salty snacks and candy yes um, oh, it's on right we're recording we're recording oh, okay good deal yeah so yeah it's a one day a week where we serve like candy and so we're so always trying to find like what's the best deal and most popular snacks. Most enjoyed. And um, I would have to say that the Dots pretzels are a huge hit. Yeah. This is a thing that I think is kind of new to this region. They're out of the like further Midwest, St. Louis, like kind of area. Yeah, like Plains Midwest. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other Midwest people mean different things when they say <laughs> they Midwest. They do. They do. They're talking about different places, and some people outside of the Midwest think it's all one place. All right, but no, it covers thousands of miles. Um, so, <clears throat> but yeah, I didn't really know about these things until I heard some people in a conference call in uh, 
St. Louis. St. Louis talking about them. I was like, huh, I wonder if I can get those here. And you can. Yes, you can. And they're delicious, although they have a lot of garlic and powder in them, and they give me way Terrible too much gas. <laughs> they're just lo- I mean, that's what makes them delicious. They're full of garlic powder and sugar. Yes. So yeah, right. really. Yeah. Like, it, for most palates, adding sugar helps, and for certain palates, um, extra garlic goes a long way too. Yeah. So they are very tasty. Um, basically, the flavor is yeast extract, garlic, and sugar, as you say. Mm-hmm. Um, they're different than the the those Gardettos. Gardettos are different than those um, Lord of the Rings looking pretzels from GFS. Oh, which are very basic. It's just I kind of like that. They actually. have a really nice. Um, they're very dry. They're very crispy, mm-hmm. um, and they're rings. Yep. And they have like a real malty kind of yeah, like I, I malt like those flour. Too. Those were good. But I think, I like you and I, are the only ones that like those. Yeah, I like them. But. Well, I, you know what? And they were actually the perfect car snack. Right, because they, they don't, like, get sugar or salt everywhere. Right. All and over they, your clothes. All over your clothes. And they don't, like, like go bad in the car. Right. They, they, well, they'll still be there. So they don't, like, melt or something Post-apocalypse. Weird. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. And actually, if, if the babies are ravenous, they like them, too. But only if they're ravenous. Yeah. Otherwise, they're 100% Team Dots. Yeah, so we got to get the uh, car snack. So we, you, you also, for movie night, you really like the plain popcorn. Yes. And we we got to start making it again, but the, every time we make it, the kids get so enthusiastic about making it that they wind up destroying the popcorn maker. Oh, some ridiculous some, thing. Like some lame, some weird thing. Like the last time they wanted to melt more butter, so they put the little plastic cup with butter in it on the stove. The stove. Yeah, it doesn't work. It yeah. didn't work. We were able to catch it in time, but still. I uh, like you didn't think maybe open flame and this little plastic okay. cup weren't yeah. compatible. No. So, but we are getting. So, okay, so this is leading us into a topic, I promise. But yeah. um, no, we were just going to ramble for forty-five minutes. Yeah, oh, but the um, the other, we're all also always looking for decent cheap candy because when we feed the kids candy for everyone to get I don't know a quarter four ounces of candy or something like that takes like um that's a lot <laughs> even even for everyone to get two ounces of candy <laughs> right so and yeah and people like different things so we usually want like at least one sour candy at least one chocolatey candy and mm-hmm. uh, you know like and one, one one sugary thing one sugary thing so this week we're trying uh, a, a gigantic bag of Albanese gummy bears. Yep. And the aforementioned Airhead, Airhead Extremes, which, having tried some of them, I have to say are a little disappointing. They're, yeah. They're neither Airhead-like or extreme. extreme. No, neither of the both. So. We'll oh, see. well, just disappointing. I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. And we used to get these big batches of. Tootsie Rolls, including the fruit Tootsie Rolls, which mm-hmm. I like a lot. Yeah. But I kind of get they, a little You, you got bored with them. Yeah. yeah. That's true. You're Team Novelty. I have to. I can't eat the same <clears throat> thing twice. Um, Wild. Okay. I mean, I do, but notice even when we have you, taco night, we change it up a lot. Uh, that's on your behalf, yes. Sometimes we use... Sometimes it becomes nacho night. Sometimes it becomes... Um, Soft taco, taco night. night. Sometimes it becomes hard shell taco night. Sometimes it's turkey. We started making fish tacos. Like the fish tacos were great. <laughs> this is a, a cheap life hack to make something that we know the kids will eat. You take just commercial bulk fish sticks. Yeah, chop them up and ro- like cook them till they're r- crispy, and uh-huh. then throw them in a uh, soft taco with like some. Especially if you can get, like, the, the fresca, what is it called? Oh, the, that salsa fresca. Salsa fresca or that um, that green sauce. That... Chile verde? No, remember the, the, it's like sour cream based. Oh, the lime cilantro. Lime cilantro dressing. Dressing. That was very, very good. Yeah. So that's it. You're welcome. That's a cheap hack for cheap making hack. fish tacos. Fish tacos. <laughs> and they slap. They really, they were really good. I mean, yeah, it's not quite, you know, like oh, it's gourmet no, restaurant it's grade. It's no gourmet but restaurant. Okay. Um, yeah. we're, we're always 
we, we've had to compromise our taste buds to a certain extent over the years in order to keep mm-hmm. a whole gaggle of kids fed. And we just got a delivery from Costco this morning. We love dates, and the kids love dates. Oh, sweet, precious Jesus. We, st- <laughs> we stopped getting medjool dates because... They're incredibly sticky. They're very sticky. The kids leave sticky handprints everywhere, and um, they also they they eat them so fast. Just mow straight through them. So we got we have been getting instead these Deglet Noir dates, which are drier and sweeter, mm-hmm. or less sweet. Um, sorry, drier and less sweet. And those are delicious. I really like them. Yes. But um, we got a two and a half pound bag from Costco. And then, yeah. like, while we were doing stuff, I was working on a podcast from a couple of weeks ago, and Benjamin came wandering in to tell us that he had just barfed from eating too many dates. And I went and looked at the bag, and there was maybe a half a pound left in the bag. Yep. So, in a couple of, in a couple of hours, hours, the young kids had eaten it wiped two down pounds like of, $10 worth of dates. Uh, not that they're not to eat. Yeah, but they're not to gorge on. <laughs> yeah. So last time, last podcast we recorded here, maybe three weeks ago, I think. Maybe before. But yeah. Before we were. Um, it might have been July, but yeah. No, it was. I, it, was it, August? it was August nineteenth. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's not that long ago. We had. Uh, so it's been. Oh, it's almost four no, weeks. It's almost four weeks. So yeah, yeah. Um, Today's the sixteenth. We were swarmed by a bee, <laughs> a wasp, a yellow jacket. A yellow jacket just came, it yeah. just wouldn't stop. No, I say swarmed because it might have, a, this this one thing, this one creature was so aggressive that he might as well have been a swarm. Because he kept coming back at different angles okay. and different hey, places. Hey, <laughs> like, hey, hey, hey. Getting all up in our faces. Hey, hey, hey. At one point he was crawling on my hand while I was holding the recorder, so you get him in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Is this your microphone? Is this your that's microphone? Kinda, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Cool. Can I see? Can I see? Yeah. Does it bother you? Really touching in you? your face. Well, but now, this week, this well, last few yeah. weeks... Four weeks of the day, because it was a Saturday. Four weeks later. Four weeks later, we're here in a different spot in the same park. You can hear the crickets going. Yeah. Um, which I love. But yeah. um, although we had one in our house, and for a while I couldn't tell if it was my tinnitus or an actual cricket in our kitchen. Right. Or like what? Because um, right? my tinnitus is that loud. But uh, the uh, we've recently. It's recently cooled down enough that we want to be outside. So much. But when we gorgeous. go outside, just clouds of mosquitoes. And it's really, it's we really like bad. almost run to the car and jump in the car and close it. And then there are like a dozen mosquitoes outside, yeah. inside the car. Right. And Waiting. Like, but today I, we drove down the driveway, got to the end. I jumped out to get the mail. Mm-hmm. I was outside the car for like 30 seconds and I got three bites during that time. Yes. And I'm sitting here already, I have three or four more. Right. And this is so disheartening. We moved here to this neighborhood Mm -hmm. so that the kids could be basically be outside as much as possible. Right, they could just go feral outside. Every day if they want to. Right. And it's finally cool enough. Because it was, it, was, and, it was too hot. It was actually oh, yeah. measurable, and there was also all this air quality. Half the summer, alerts. it was dangerously yeah. smoky. Right, dangerous air quality. It was terrible. But um, but now they they go outside and they the babies go outside to play and they come in crying because they're covered with bites. You know. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So, anyway, very disheartening. I don't know. We're we're and we don't know what's in these mosquitoes. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't think it's malaria yet, but <laughs> it's, it's not malaria. But there might be West Nile. There might be Zika. It, those, both of those have been recorded, uh, uh, documented in Michigan. And EEE. And oh, and EEE is definitely in Michigan. Eastern and, equine encephalitis. Right. Um, which is not often fatal, but you know, it's not yeah. something you want. You don't want to. You don't want to dance with that devil. Especially if you're. And none of these things do you want, especially if your immune system is already kind of effed up with COVID. Right, 
But, well, um, yeah, yeah. Now, I, in fairness to our neighbor with the horses, they can't horses can't board there, and she doesn't raise any horses. They haven't been vaccinated against EEE. I asked her. They have not been. They have been. They have been. So they can only board there. They shouldn't pass. And she it can on. only raise them. Okay. If they've been vaccinated okay. against EEE. All right. So that shouldn't be a huge risk factor but there are horses there and vaccines are not 100 percent effective no and uh you know you get enough mosquito bites yeah in the safety zone or the danger zone we suspect yeah. that we actually may have had it yeah, a couple summers ago when it was really uh, i guess some weird illness not tr- not trending exactly i said a couple this maybe, was maybe five years ago this was before covid hit. right and um it there were reports of it being circulating and being documented in, in Michigan. In our county. And yeah. in our county. So, yeah. And I was like, actually, within half a mile of a horse farm is a risk. We have this un- these unexplained bouts of illness. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, summertime illness. You know, we, fever, can't, et we can't prove anything. We didn't test. Everyone survived. Uh, you know. And I figured um, once, usually, if you have EEE, it's not a concern for you anymore. You but again... To, you ought to maintain some immunity if, if other viruses don't, like, wipe the slate clean. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know... Or just damage your ability to fight off... And, to, to, your immune system to function. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Well... Okay. This, this week, mosquitoes. Last month, bees. This month, mosquitoes. Next month... Tornadoes. Tornadoes. <laughs> It's it's just, it's, just uh, it's so here. disheartening. Uh, the, like I get a nice, really nice day. I spend all week indoors at my desk. Like uh, then we have a l- little bit of time outside, and I come back covered with mosquito bites, and I'm slathering myself with. Uh, yeah, I mean repellents don't. I've never found them to work that well. Um, not that well. Uh, I mean, I get some relief from them, but they're not that good. And I, I gotta go slather my arms and legs with um, a combination of uh, Benadryl cream and uh, hydrocortisone cream. Like either each one, one does, doesn't do it, but together they they give you relief. They give me relief. Right. <laughs> That's so stupid. Here we are. Here we are. The, the topic at hand. Is, which we were so close to. Which we were so close to. But we're there now. I think we're there now. We're 17 minutes in. We're tanned and rested and ready. If there's swarms. I came here tanned. <laughs> How long have you been working on that? <laughs> nine months. Maybe nine months. Um, sorry, that they really are biting. God damn Long story. It. Okay. We're talking about food. Food security. And... How to, in the we, as we've been ill, we've gotten kind of lazy and and started to resort to, you know, like the best packaged food we could find, but packaged and food, bulk yeah. packaged food, but right. to, as to be cheap, mm-hmm. economical, mm-hmm. but not really what we ideally would be eating all the time. Right. We stash, we stock up on a lot of boxed pasta like brown rice a lot of canned tomatoes a lot of canned black beans and canned refried beans one reason is that the kids can just take these raw and not raw but these like ingredients and and they can make themselves a pasta sauce and and pasta we get frozen meatballs we get um frozen chicken thighs we get Mm-hmm. Various things that are, we get lunch meat sometimes, um, mm, yeah, yeah, uh, and eggs, of course, which to me are like the ultimate convenience protein, right? Yeah, but great convenience food. But we really, um, we get canned coconut milk. We get can we get packaged oatmeal. Mm-hmm. What else is our like bulk food stock? We we buy butter. We buy we buy butter, bacon, yeah, bacon. Um, lentils, lentils, black eyed peas. Black-eyed peas. You know, I realized I I miss garbanzo beans. Yeah. Um, I make these uh, curries all winter. Right. Right. And so I use garbanzo beans two or three times a week throughout the winter. Yeah. Just because I'm making a curry here or there. So we've got a big shelving unit in our basement that is stuffed with all these canned 
you shelf stable stuff. Oh, tuna and salmon. Tuna, canned tuna, tuna, big tuna. cans. And yeah. There's olive oil and vinegar and things like that. And, like, baking powder and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That mayo, can't, like, charred mayo rather than make our own mayo. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm going to stop talking because the bites are making me want to s- scream. So why don't you talk about what else we're trying to get to? Oh, so to some extent, um, I think we want to get more in line with some of the, um, I guess, whole, whole food eating that we did before where we'd buy. Um, so a lot of those things kind of are whole foods, right? Yeah. Like beans. You know, but they, they are, we, we drain them, but they are prepped. They have but they're added prepped, sodium right? and whatnot. They are added sodium, but they're, they're prepped. The, the, yeah. the soaking and that processing is done for yeah. us. Um, and we used to use more dry beans, right? Yeah. And um, t- to the point where I remember one time, uh, Pippin was in a phase where he loved refried beans. Loved, loved, loved refried beans. And we ran out of the canned refried beans. Yeah. And I actually took some beans that I'd soaked and, and like baked earlier or soaked and boiled earlier and said, look, I will make you refried beans. I will come to the stove and refry them and then make you a tortilla. Yep. And he sat there and stared at me the whole time as Pippin and does. Fascination. Fascination. And then I made it and he scarfed it down. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah, so now he knows how to do it. Now he knows how to do it. Yeah. Do it. Um, but yeah, so we... We did more things like that where if somebody wanted hummus, we had chickpeas, we could buy right. hummus. Because now, now we keep hummus we, in the fridge. We buy packaged hummus. We also buy either frozen hash brown patties or dehydrated Dehydr- hash, hash browns brown in little containers. Which one or the other is usually available when one of them is not. Right. Um, so and the kids will do either. They either um, bake or pan fry the patties uh-huh. or they rehydrate right. them with hot water and then fry in a pan the um or on a tray in the oh, oven the right. the uh the, really rehy- the rehydrated hash browns right and Which, really the big step that's missing there is that they um well there's a couple of big steps the big step is that you don't have to shred them you don't have to start with potato peel you don't have to start them, with shred the potato them, peel it shred it etc even if you just scrub it and peel it I, scrub it and shred it personally Starting with potatoes, I would only ever make home fries because shredding them like that is just too much. Well, work. that's the thing because when you shred them, this is the thing that's in the um, dehydrated and in the frozen ones. The step that happens yeah. industrially, you shred them, you squeeze the liquid out, yeah. and you add the starch back in. Yeah. And so, um, if you make, if you ever make latkes, that's really the, right. the important step to having great crispy latkes. You want to. Squ- yeah. Squeeze out all the water from the potatoes, and then drain off the liquid, and then remix the starch back into the potatoes. Yeah, and if they sit, they turn gray. They turn and it's gray. Kind of so it's you got to work quickly, and you got to yeah. reassemble them, and then you're ready to fry. And it's this kind of, I won't say tedious, but like um, labor intensive. Labor intensive steps. You just have to do it, right. and so it saves that step for you, me, or the children. Right. Um, Whereas, you know, uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, um, we were team shred our potatoes, shred those potatoes. Yeah. Um, we still cut up apples. I, I haven't resorted to cutting, buying um, uh, Pre, pre-cut, apples. pre-cut apples. Well, let's talk about the... But we do have this applesauce situation. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, look. That is something the little kids... Love applesauce. And we use it like they were pets. We disguise their vitamins in it. Yeah, yeah, I, get, I put we some of the vitamins open in. open up the capsules and pour the... Pour the vitamins in, mix them in, and they take their vitamins and applesauce. That way. And this I, is only the two youngest. The two youngest, right? And um, there is this problem where I can't actually keep an open jar of applesauce in my fridge. Right. Um, so... So we get the little We get the little plastic little containers cups. with this foil lid and the plastic cup, and they're single serve, and when you, once open, you can eat until it's gone. It's so it's wasteful, but yet... We've resorted to this. I, I, I haven't found a better way. I haven't found uh, a better way. I mean, I suppose I could get reused, like take some reusable glass jars and put the sauce in it. we'd have to hide it. or freeze them to keep the kids from just going Just through mowing through them. one at a time, right? Because actually, that's true. The applesauce cups, yeah. we have to keep them in the basement. We have them kept away from the babies behind right. 
door codes. Right. And so um, they don't actually have ready access to them. Right. Whereas uh, the other rejarring jarred applesauce into smaller glass jars, reusable glass jars, yeah. would be a, it's a matter of I, I'd have to basically can them so they could be right. shelf-stable. Right. Or get a fridge and put a fridge in the fridge. <laughs> I mean, like it's just ridiculous. Or, you, it's you don't so want to ridiculous. Glass jars, but not you know, really. It, it you know, put them in more plastic. But then I'm gonna like stuff. defrost them before I can give the kids the vitamins. Yeah. I mean, it's just this ridiculous uh, daisy chain of decision making. And, and I, <clears throat> and yes, we've had the conversation about don't eat all the applesauce. We've had the don't eat all the applesauce conversation. It's about as effective as don't eat all the dates. They did eat all the dates. They only ate two pounds. So you know. <laughs> Here we are with a lot of food choices we normally would not have made. Yeah. And part of the part of the reason I feel like the supplementation is so important, at least for me at this time in our lives, is we are eating all these foods that we normally would not have eaten. That they've lost some of their natural vitamins. Right. That, that have a lower nutrient content. Yeah. And um, not that you can entirely make up for the. Not really. Like. Not really, but you can kind of you know shore up against it, yeah. if that makes sense. I, I, I want to mention also that another thing we've not been doing that we used to do, and when I say used to, I mean actually 10 years ago, ten years. was we really were growing enough greens that we would have oh, fresh yeah, salads. salads of different kinds, like very much mix and match greens yeah. all spring and summer. That was from amazing. our gardens. That was absolutely amazing. Yes. And we had so many meals that were centered around a salad that just salad. contained like it was literally the best salad anyone in the world could eat. Like Bill Gates, I would say this at the time, like Bill Gates could not pay for a better salad, you no. know, right? It was just it was wonderful. There's, yeah, there was no money that would give us better access yeah. to food than this. Um, you know, than like stuff you grew org- organically and then just picked like from your own front yard and then put it on your plate yeah and we had all these mixed salads that it, it, when we a couple a few years ago here we were uh able to make salads with uh um what were the we had uh the, the one that's still there oh yes my good friend um Anise hyssop. Anise hyssop, which we would just use as a little bit because you only want a little bit. It's a bit like licorice or anise, right? Yeah, delicious, but it's just like a. a And sorrel. Sorrel. And arugula. The sorrel and the arugula, both. Citrusy and spicy. One spicy, one citrusy, tart flavored. Mm -hmm. Um, Very, so delicious. And then, you know, we had some lettuces too. Oh, yes. Lettuces are a little challenging for me, but Uh, yeah. yeah. They're hard to grow here because our yard is infested with rabbits and and they love them. the The hyssop, the sorrel, and the they don't go for those. They don't go for those things. And we would throw in other herbs too. We'd throw in some basil leaves occasionally. Basil, cilantro, as April. Cilantro and other, even mint leaves. Like if you're making a dressing with mint leaves, mm-hmm. you know that's like that's what a fatouche dressing is really. Yes. I mean, with some other fatouche, things. Uh, Tabuli. Tabbouleh. Yeah, a partially in, partially in mint and whatnot. Yeah, man, yeah. so good. Oh, oh yeah, we've grown a huge amount of parsley too. Yeah, parsley. And so we were making occasionally. It's very labor intensive, but mm-hmm. we were occasionally making fresh, um, fresh green salads from fresh tabbouleh. Tabbouleh, and it was so good. So good. So good. No downside. Better than the stuff you get from the takeout place, which the, where the parsley is a little elderly, a little wilted, kind of. Yeah. Know. Well, I, honestly, there's no takeout place that has parsley that was harvested five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> so yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, because we run it through the food processor, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, but, but yeah, so we're trying now. Uh, we've been like in lockdown, so our own personal kind of lockdown. Yeah, not a state, not a state lockdown. Nobody's imposing it on us. We're imposing it on ourselves. We're just we're trying to we're better just trying to, to keep call our kids it alive. like a, a type of isolation, right? But um, that we really got out of the loop as far as hunting. I mean, we we were getting eggs locally from farm mm-hmm. stands. Although our egg 
provider has dropped off the radar. Twice. Yeah, well, this, and apparently this is the thing. You find a local aid person, and then they have some kind of hiccup. They have an issue with their right. flock. Or... And this is really the thing. A lot of the local aid providers are not doing this as their main source of income. Right. So it's a side hustle, and they take money, get money when they can. And if, they, if things aren't going well, they just drop off the... They, they drop off. And this, this has happened twice. Right. But um, the we have now found a local produce stand that we're really pleased with. Yes. Nemeth is just, um, it's two blocks, but, you know, blocks in our neighborhood are uh, subject, <laughs> uh, uh, lo- a very it's loose not, term. Yeah, right. It's, it's, a, it's two miles away. It's about two miles away. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're well-established family two, farm. Two and a half, maybe. I don't know. That uh, has been around for stages, around for decades, selling at the farmer's market since forever. Yeah. All the farmer's markets, they're usually there. They've got a stand. And they have just a, an outdoor tent. Mm-hmm. You can just get out and nobody's arguing with you about your mask. And you can just drop a check in the drop box. box. Grab the food that you grab. grab the stuff. And take it home. And so far we've gotten from them a variety of squashes. Yummy. We've gotten some very nice tomatoes. Also yummy. Um, we've gotten some... Some nice okra, and I don't say that lightly. lightly. Yeah, no, it was, it was delicious. I'm it not a delicious. real okra fan, but if if it's small and young, yeah, it's and very you tender. Like flash, for, like fry it really hot. Mm-hmm. It's very good, but very good. I don't like it stewed or cooked for a long time. And once it gets old, it's slimy. And well, do, do you ever have it in jambalaya? I don't like it in jambalaya. Oh, all right, fair. Yeah, I don't like it cooked. I like it fried. Fried. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, and the, what else did we get? Uh, eggplant. We got all the nightshades. Just no potatoes. No potatoes, but all the nightshades and peppers, tomatoes, all eggplant, um, squash. Oh, fruits, peaches. Pe- they have pears, very apples. nice peaches. Their apples and pe- and peaches and pears are, you know, cosmetically mm-hmm. not, not the prettiest. Not the prettiest, but delectable. I'm just going to hold my breath for a minute here. Yep. Good move. Good move. I don't have my mask on. Not a good move. <laughs> well, no one was... No one was here. No one has been by here. Right. Lady just rode by with her babies coughing in a uh-huh. stroller. Um, the, um... Well... There it is. So maybe this is our, our Waterloo. I'll <sighs> top not. The, um... No, it's a wonderful... The Paula Reds. The, they had Paula, oh, Red Paula apples. Reds apples. Very good. The apples are cosmetically a little ugly. Um, the peaches look overripe, but that's actually when they're really the really most the delicious. Best, delicious. So. We've had some amazing peach crisps. Crumb, crisps yeah, crumbles, crumbles, crisps, whatever they yeah. are. But they're good. Do you want to walk? Yeah, I got to get... I'm, they're like, I'm so many bites. <sighs> Fuck, excuse me. Just, I'm gonna need to basically bathe in Benadryl sauce, etc. Right. Um, but yeah, the Nemeth is. I'm not going in the woods because that's gonna nope, be deadly. Gonna go it's it's gotten di- darker. Right? And yeah, the so day is fading a bit. Right, we're going straight across uh, okay. over land. We're going uh, over land. Over land. <laughs> we're gonna stand in the middle of the pavement. They really don't like to be in direct sun because they desiccate pretty quickly. Yep. But um, as soon as the sun fades, God damn, they are ready to go, ready to rock and roll. So, I hope that baby didn't give me anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's not. We're not in a bowl. We're not in a pressure dome. There is air moving. Yep. We're outside. Yeah. We're outside. But we got infected outside before. I know. So, um, the, uh, okay, anyway, so we're going there regularly now. And they're open until when? They're uh, they're open until they start producing October, November. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this is kind of making up for our lack of um home cooking yeah like for for the last couple of years i haven't been well the last 18 months at least 
I haven't been making like eggplant parm from scratch. I haven't been. Yeah. We just haven't been getting. We ha we haven't been orienting our diet around what's seasonal and fresh. Seasonal, fresh, and, and from scratch. And right. And so a couple of weeks ago, we brought our first batch of veggies from Nemeth. Nemeth, and then what I made pan fried. Um, Haricots, ver, haricots, verts, yeah. um, pan fried zucchini. Mm -hmm. I made a big pot of soft scrambled eggs. Yes. Um, and we just threw thyme in with the veggies. Mm -hmm. And you made a big crisp. A huge uh, uh, apple peach crisp. And the, the uh, seared veggies out of the pan. Fantastic. We're so good that I just nearly was weeping. Yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, you, you make these, like, fancy vegetable dishes, and you're like, the kids won't like these. If the veggies are really fresh and mm -hmm. really ripe and sweet, you know, yeah. um, the kids freaking loved it. They yeah, ate every ate bit. Uh, even all. the babies ate the the beans and the... These were small zucchini, which sear faster and have more f flavor than mm -hmm. the big ones, which taste like tofu. <laughs> yes, tofu vegetables. <laughs> but um, that was Why so make nice. Why you can grow it? That was so nice. And it was making me just mournful about how little gardening we did over the last year and a half. Yeah. Our garden is completely out of control. Overrun. Yeah. Yeah. But it's what happens when you can't, like, use your own yard. You've, uh, for so many reasons, right? Right. Not just, not just the health reasons, right? <laughs> like so many reasons. Yeah. The other issue is like... They were switching sides. Switching sides. We have to figure out how to overwinter. Like We, we do. Yeah. Both us. Now the density of mosquitoes inside the car is less than the outside. Before it was more. <laughs> more. But now... Yeah. Now we've sort of even that out. They're good for us. One of our. They're in here. They're in here. Damn. They really fall. Oh, tell, tell them about poor K our friend Kagan, what he did with the mosquito. <laughs> we're driving the down. Car. We're driving down I-75, and one of my friends, one of my son's friends, was riding. Was the riding car with us. Year. And he's like, "Oh, this mosquito." And he's like, "Don't worry, I'll get." And like smacks on the windshield and uh, cracks, cracks the windshield. windshield. <laughs> And he was so mortified. <laughs> Just like, oh my, this is possible. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's, there's two things at work. One is that he was a teenager yes. and he was a little bit stronger than he Quite imagined realized. that right. he was, right? Yes, yes. Of course, the other is, oh, like, it was an accident, dude. We're not going to make you pay for the windshield. <laughs> no, Jesus it was an accident. Christ. No, it was just fine. But, um, <laughs> not a big deal. It was so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're trying to tell it's fine. Don't it's really you fine. know? Don't lose sleep over this. It's, it's not like it was a new car, anyway. <laughs> so. No, no, this was like a '95. Right. Uh, this was a '95 Escort. In. Oh, oh, 2010. Like 2012. 2012. Yeah, 2012. Right. So, like that. the windshield was bound to be broken sooner or later. Point, sooner or later. It was coming. It was, in, it was in the pipeline. Right. Yeah. So, the other issue we have with staying on the kinds of foods we liked. And, and to be fair, I don't mean to like suggest that this is what we're eating now is food that should not be eaten. No, like, we just, we, we really feel better and enjoy our meals better when we're eating more seasonal fruits and vegetables that are actually local and, and fresh. Like, yeah, it, it feels like it feels better to eat. Yeah, it uh, to improves me it our tastes health, better. it improves our mental health. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, a, and we're and we're trying so hard to like push against this notion of food as fuel. Food should be different things. It should be a even the cheapest food you can get. Yep. Should be a delicious experience, and it should be a communal experience. Yeah. And yeah. it should also be a craft that you learn how to do. You know. Mm -hmm. And so, in that regard. I feel the same way about a, uh, a grilled cheese sandwich sure. that I do about a charcuterie board. Sure. That I do about, you know, the most a salad. expensive. A salad. 
a steak supper, a steak right. dinner, etc. Like all those things. An awful lot of our meals are like, oh, some frozen meatballs and a can of tomato sauce and some pasta, right? Right. It's not like we're not we're really snooty in that way. No, but we're foaming it in. Everyone's got to eat, yes. so, we're, so we're getting yes. we're getting everyone fed. Right, and we've been relying. And this is actually. People might think that this is a bad thing, but I actually see it as a good thing. We're actually relying on the kids a lot to help with prep and cleanup. Oh, right. And I know to that participate. it's now considered like some form of child abuse to make your child do chores or learn how to cook and clean. Yeah. But it but actually, no. in our view, this is really, really good for them. And, yeah. 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 And when they do cleanup, if it's going well, you actually see the three oldest teenagers mm -hmm. in the kitchen laughing singing, singing songs together and like doing this participatory like cleanup and basically doing the many hands make light work thing where right. they each take a, take a, a chore and they're working together and they're entertaining each other and having and they're laughing and babbling and you know so, right. sometimes singing songs or what oh right right and there's nothing Teasing, joking. There's, from my perspective, there's nothing nicer to hear than siblings actually doing something together and, and enjoying it. Enjoying each other's company. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really rewarding to hear that. And that, to me alone, is worth making all the, <laughs> making them do their damn chores. Do their chores, right? Because <laughs> yeah. everyone's going to have to do chores someday. Someday. Really, and chores are a part of life. Yeah, and if they leave home knowing how to actually feed themselves in a reasonable way, right? In a both inexpensive and reasonably healthy and good. And, and actually, I've got to emphasize this part of it. I, I I'm not eating the foods I prefer the most, right? But I'm eating the food that I can, right? And I think if you are pressured by work pressured by a crisis time in your life yes um under pressure from various disability right or capacity constraints um you need to know how to put together a balanced meal from what you can find on the shelf yeah and, we, and that's valuable learning we right? always focus on uh, personally i focus on the protein fiber uh, and um some kind of and the, vegetable the fat. protein fiber high quality fat Right. And then whatever vitamins you can supplement it with from vegetables or right. whatnot. So our, our our movie night feast, not that much of a feast now. We've settled on meatball subs. We didn't get sub buns. Oops. Oops. I have a, I have a fix, though. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. When we do all this pickup, sometimes stuff is just missing at the last minute. And like, like oh. sold out. We didn't know. Well, we didn't get sub buns, but recently we've been having meatball subs, which mm -hmm. are basically we put a bunch of meatballs in a cast iron pan with a jarred sauce that doesn't have any added sugar and mm -hmm. cook it down a bit until it's the sauce is kind of thick and the meatballs are a little brown. And mm -hmm. then they just serve them on sub buns. Yep. Right. And then... We also have a veggie tray, and the veggie, the veggie tray, tray consists of like just bags of broccoli we chop up and serve with. Oh, dips and, and like sweet peppers and carrots. Peppers, and celery, carrots, celery. Basic, some dips. basic crudite, yeah. right? right kind crudite, of thing. like some like a like an artichoke dip. Yeah. And then like a, yeah. um, I really like the the vegan dip, and there's the a buff the buffalo cashew buffalo wing flavored cashew cashew, cashew dip. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, oh, and hummus, an old hummus, standby. Yeah, yeah. and. Everyone yeah. has to eat the protein and some veggies before we bring out the, the candy. candy. Yeah. Because even we, actually, honestly, the, the snacks, I, I feel like I, I don't feel bad about these snacks. I think popcorn's a great snack. Yeah. The popcorn is actually largely healthy. Um, yeah. It's certainly not that unhealthy. It has some fiber, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then the candy is, you know, the once a week treat. Like they didn't, mm -hmm. they, we don't actually stock, and they don't get candy any other time, except yeah. for Halloween. You know, Halloween. It's, oh, and Easter too. Easter, Easter too. and yeah, which, um, and before the pandemic, Halloween and Easter was the only time I bought candy for our kids. Right. Like I, we don't, we just don't do candy. Right. But we started doing the movie night candy. Yeah. Yeah. 
to compensate just a little bit for the fact that our lives have become so small, small and and uh, repetitive. Res- repetitive. Yeah, yeah. It's it's and it's always funny to me to say that because it's not like we changed much. Not much. Not, not much. Really. This but, isn't. But consider that a few years ago, in a typical week. You would be out with some of the kids several times, mm-hmm. taking them to choir or uh, other th- youth group. Youth group, yeah. You know, uh, sometimes homeschool stuff. Homeschool group get-together kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So like three times a week, and then church. And so then s- church. So like four four days out of seven, we were out. Doing we were something. out doing something. Right. Yeah. And, and not also before the pandemic, you were driving to and from work and had your third place and. Right. I I had a third place, several third places. Um, several days a week, I would stop at a place for breakfast. I would leave early for work, mm-hmm. stop and get breakfast, and then arrive, and take a moment to you know recompress. <laughs> yep. Right. And enjoy enjoy a nice breakfast. Have a couple cups of coffee, and then get to the office feeling like I actually could tolerate being there. <laughs> yes. Right. Fuck and now job. I work entirely from home. And it's great in some ways. And and I there's I don't think I could have done anything else with my long COVID symptoms, especially not when they were more severe. Right. But um, it is not ideal uh, in terms of social engagement even with co-workers and it's always a bit of a category error to like think of your co-workers as your family or friends but they, you you have a social relationship with yeah them. because they that you got to remember that social relationship can be ripped away from you at any moment mm-hmm. <laughs> and has been with me so many times right it's and you know also they're not a lot of co-workers aren't actually on your side on anything they're actually maybe scheming to get uh, the the next whatever. rank above you. you know, yeah, the next you, whatever, the next rank, the next yeah, the next project, project the next or, like yeah, whatever, whatever it is. it is. But they're not always your friends. It's actually it's coworkers usually who do completely different jobs than I do that mm-hmm. I usually get along with a little better. Right, you know, they don't view as competition. Yeah, and actually at th- this last job, one of the like a woman who worked there who was doing mostly accounting stuff mm-hmm. was um, asking me to uh, help her learn Python. Oh, yeah. And that was fun. We had a good mm-hmm. time with that. That was so fun. I showed her some of the little Python stuff that I was writing for actual tasks for work that was mostly just processing files. Like, you feed yeah. it this file, it pulls numbers out and does something with them. And it gave her basically, like, some sample code to play with. Mm-hmm. Um, not, but, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but... Uh, so we have given up some things. We but, have given up some things. But, what, yeah, we weren't... We were this home homeschooling family anyway, right? What are the rest of your um, priorities as far as trying to increase our food independence a little bit? And by independence, I mean... Not completely off the grid, but oh, like, not off the grid even. But um, I, I, I think independence is the wrong way. Resilience, our food resilience. Resilience, getting yeah. al- also getting away from like um, large scale agriculture as much as is reasonable. Getting away from like um, ex- like exotic packaged food, or o- yeah. or especially avoiding. Um, there's processed food, like the canned beans are processed, right? Yeah. But there's also highly processed, right? Oh, so or yeah. ultra processed, yeah. they call it now. Okay, so I, I've got to try to avoid that. I've altogether. got so yeah, I've got to say some things um, say about something. all that, right? Yeah. So first of all, I, I think it's very important. There's this thing that happens when people talk about food and talk about processed food, right? As if processed food is some other different thing than the food that we eat, because right. essentially. Everything that ends up in your stomach it's has been processed, processed in some way. <laughs> yes, every single thing. It's like even people, the salad. We chop it up from right, our garden. Right, we, we well, wash it off. We chop it up. In we, other words, you didn't just bend down and chew it off the ground. Although I certainly have been known to do that that's when, in some, our garden. Oh yeah, with the sweet peas, I actually do that. Oh god, I once would, a day, I just when, come by and just, just bite it. When we were growing those little sweet peppers, 
Uh, when I or or the uh, um, they're still there. They're just buried in weeds. Um, mm-hmm. The the um, uh, what do they call the Cape gooseberries? Oh yes, yes, I know what you're talking about. Ground cherries. Ground cherries. Um, they're not. They're similar to Cape gooseberry. No, they're ground cherries. They're they're okay. a kind of um, tomatillo, little tomatillo, little sweet, sweet little sweet tomatillo. tomatillo. That have little lantern-like uh, shells, right, like papery can. shells. Um, yeah, the papery shell gets all brown. That's perfect. That's and really you pull good. it off, and you just pop this thing in your mouth, and it's delightful. It's delightful. It's a little burst of flavor. flavor um, if you know, sunshine. if you know uh, Lord Fowl's Bane, the Chronicles of Thomas, Tom, Thomas Covenant, Thomas Covenant by Stephen R. Donaldson. He mm-hmm. describes these little berries that are called treasure berries, and yes. they're uh, aliantha. They're a, a mix of salty, sweet, and sour. Like you know, he's just describing ground cherries. Basically, yeah. <laughs> they're the closest thing I've ever eaten to to like an al- aliantha to a treasure berry, right. and supposedly they have magical powers, like you can live on them, right? Because they have so much nutrition. Well, some summers I have. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no they don't actually have protein but that's no, the idea yeah, that's the idea um, so yes so the, the first thing at least kind of like people say oh I don't want anything that has chemicals in it and I'm like okay um, tell me more <laughs> what, are, what, <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you made of exactly so what, what would this thing be made of ectoplasm and I don't mean to, uh, so I don't mean to like mock anyone no, talking about this. but it's things. a dumb talking point it, it's, but it, it's a it's I think that it's like a miss um Misdirected talking point because yeah. the problem isn't chemicals. The problem is um, chemicals pollute. that you don't want. In chemicals your body. that you don't want in your body. Things that don't belong yeah. in your body. Right. right. And the, it's not so much that the food has been processed. Everything you eat is processed. It's how it was processed, what was added, what was taken away, and those are the kinds of concerns you're actually worried about. Unless the fact the fact of it being processed. Mm-hmm. Um. So. The other piece here that I really think is important is um, supply chains and yes. distribution networks yeah. and what those distribution networks are and how they were built and how they're meant to function. So um, so that's why I really wanted to get a feel for someone like within a five-mile radius of us that's growing food. How but many I, different sources within a very narrow... A very narrow way. What, what exists? If we needed to go to the produce place on foot with a backpack, we could. Aside from the fact that we're not very good at walking these days, um, yeah. but theoretically we could. We theoretically could. We really could. And I think um, with that walker I was looking at, with some some sort of mobility aids, yeah. it would be a long trip. Yeah. It would be a long trip, I, but it's a trip I could make. I think I could do it. I need to experiment with how far I can go before it really. How far you can safely go, what you can me. tolerate, and what you can carry, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there's that piece of it, but also not just. So you know these uh, egg folks who are raising eggs um, as a side hustle. Yeah. And they go and they, they come and they go and they come and they go. Most local producers have a window when they can't produce in the winter. Yes. That's not what I'm talking about. That's just seasonal. Right. But uh, the nature of these sort of side hustle egg producers is. Um, if anything goes wrong. If anything goes wrong. They have eggs for themselves, but eggs for other people, like, it comes and it goes. It's really sort of a fair-weather friend right. situation. So there's another layer, though, where you have, like, the farm we're going to, Nemeth Farms. They've, I think this is the second or third generation that's been farming on this land and selling food to this community. Yeah, and they, they have a huge variety of produce on a relatively small lot. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's not this huge. I don't think it's 10 acres. I think no. it's like 5 acres, right? Um, I can't tell for sure how far well, back. Well, it goes it, back a little ways. But it's yeah. they've got a small apple orchard with yep. quite a variety of apples and mm-hmm. peaches. They've got corn. They've oh, we, had, that's, we had sweet corn. Sweet corn there. It was, it was quite, really good. Quite good, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so Plus all these. Oh, they also have a huge flower garden, which I think is... They don't seem to be selling them. No, I think that's for them. It's just for their own right. enjoyment. And um, so what that means is they have an established network of distribution. Yeah. So they're growing all this food, and they have in mind already some place that food is going to end up. Mm-hmm. There's a farmer's market. There's their stand. They've got places to put the food once the seed produces. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing it for a long time. 
really the collapse in that system because I noticed a lot of their varieties are open pollinated because I know that they've got so I, I've noticed that they're they're using some of that kind of resilience as well. Yeah. Um, so really, the weaknesses are their fertilizer, what the fertilizers they're using, their um, access yeah. to seeds, etc. But the rest of it, you know, if that's cut off, they'll coast for a while, but eventually you have to amend the soil. You got to amend the soil. Yeah. And, but you know, this is Washington County is primarily agricultural. They yeah. can find some soil amendments there's, throughout Washington County. There's decent, well, our yard is a weird exception, but there's decent, <laughs> there's decent growing soil all around here. Uh, these, well, not just decent growing soil, but like uh, there are all kinds of horse outputs, farms and, yeah. and animal, well, you can, you know, outputs that you can use to mint soil. To make inputs. <laughs> Precisely. Um, this other thing was, is called a dairy. We haven't got a delivery yet, but they have been delivering throughout this area oh, since yeah. 1946. We have... Um, their website is a little baroque. Their process for signing up is a little weird and kind of ad hoc. Well, honestly, Byzantine. But, um, but you can sign up online and get verified online and then give you a code to log into your account. And then you put a bunch of stuff in an order and you can set it up to d deliver weekly or t every two weeks or whatever. And you can actually change it every week up to okay. four, up until 4 p.m. the day before your delivery day. Right. And at that point, probably stuff is likely to be on a truck already or Sorry, in a truck, a pulled right. from a warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, so they have, what do they have? Well, obviously they, they have, they they have the dairy. descriptions of what they have on the website are pretty pretty limited, pretty short, like mm -hmm. very short fields from a database or something. And that's a little frustrating, mm -hmm. but they've got a lot of dairy stuff. They do have some bread, which we're going to try. Yeah. They have some eggs which we're going to try and they have a cheese. variety of yeah they have cheese sour cream obviously all that dairy stuff um we're going to try their coffee cream mm -hmm. um and and um but they also have a variety of somewhat pricey specialty uh like jarred things especially local foods yeah, so they've got like pickled beets and pickled green beans and um, jams and jellies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to get a ton of those things, but for our first delivery, I wanted to like try a few, try a variety of stuff across their product line. Mm -hmm. And um, so our first delivery should be next this coming Wednesday, mm -hmm. and it should be the estimate was seventy bucks for twenty items or something like that. Something like that. And we need to put out a cooler, and they show up and put the stuff in your cooler. And that's that. And we'll see how it goes. And then, like, we'll no doubt adjust for adjust. next time. Like, well, if their we'll eggs are really good, we'll get more eggs, if, you know, et cetera. If eggs are so so, maybe not. But, um, yeah, we're, right now we're getting our eggs, Eggland's best eggs from GFS, and yeah. they're okay. I mean, they're fine. They're fine. Just a few years ago, they were tastier, though. They, they tasted better. Is that sure it's not COVID? I'm... Because, <laughs> like, you know, all these people are like, restaurant my, food's disgusting no, now. No. It tastes like ass. My... <laughs> I I was reminded when we cooked this really nice meal of all these vegetables and herbs that mm -hmm. I can still taste pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, and also the the eating the eggland's best in direct juxtaposition to um, the local eggs we'd been eating. Right. It, it's not. It's not entirely no, it's fair comparison. They're yeah. they're actually paler than they used to be. Yeah. Because you want these. Uh, Bright yellow, well, almost orange. Yolks. Well, you don't just want them mm -hmm. because. Basically, if you get uh, um, hens that have been eating uh, a lot of bugs and stuff like that, right? Uh, and plus whatever supplements they throw their way, right? Yep. They will have um, very bright, almost orangish uh, yolks. Yolks, and those are much more flavorful. Right. Um, but some places cheat. They like they feed them entirely indoors on grains or whatnot and then they yeah. they throw in a bunch of turmeric or something like that which wow. they like i don't know if it's turmeric it's there's various things that it are changes the color of the that yolk. are natural yeah chickens are fairly simple creatures right i guess so yeah the stuff that goes in is kind of there's more else like, comes out right? if you feed your chicken like fish meal mm -hmm. um the eggs taste like ass. The eggs know. taste fishy. Yeah. It's gross. Um, really gross. Because yeah. they, like, 
some they process this stuff directly into like their whole metabolism is optimized around producing these eggs as quickly as possible yeah right um so Mm -hmm. but yeah they like I don't know if it's turmeric exactly. It could be carotene or something. But, carotene makes a lot of sense. But yeah. they feed them stuff that is food. It's technically like it's a vitamin or a... Pr- it's not like they feed them F- red FDA dye. red dye number, whatever. No, right. it's like a, a natural source food dye. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes the eggs brightly colored without having any of the additional nutrition, nutrition. that they would get. I mean, turmeric has some benefits, but like <laughs> I'm not sure it has benefits that way. in that like, way yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's like when they right. use spinach to like make green pasta. It's not spinach pasta now. You don't. You're not eating spinach. Not very much. Not very much. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's like just enough to color the pasta. Or beet juice. Or, beet juice, right? Yeah. But, you know, you're not getting extra potassium uh, a now. A little bit. But like, like, yeah, it's negligible. Yeah. So. But um, so. Yeah, we'd like to have I'm more locally better, used eggs. better eggs. And then we're also, um, our plan, and we've been able to do this in the past, has been to find local meats and buy, like, half, half a cow. Yeah, yeah. Or a whole pig. Whole pig. Mm-hmm. And we have done that once or twice. All right, we got half a pig. Actually, our friends, the Mitlings... Yeah, that was good. Um, they went to they were at a county fair or something and they they bought a prize winning pig yeah and split it with us some of the best pork i've ever had and <laughs> i swear to god mm. once you've had a prize winning pig, pig you never want to go never back, back. <laughs> that yeah. was like the various chops and bacon and steaks and bits really and good. bobs hams and whatnot oh well, so good yeah yeah. Like so much better than like Swift and Armor and all these oh, big yeah. bulk Any producers, of that stuff. just yeah, hands just down. Hands down. So yeah, no contest. We also there was a place in in um, Dexter, a farm that oh, yeah. that had various meats, and you could they had a similar arrangement. You could actually just go in and pick what you wanted out of their freezers and pay them. Yeah. Leave a check or whatnot. You've done that, and it's also very good. Very good. Very no um, not cheap. But, yeah, not uh, cheap. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, the prize-winning pig was actually modest surprise. When yeah. you buy the whole, <laughs> when you buy the whole pig, the the per pound is really not that sh- rather low. Yeah, it's a bit. It's really shocking. Though. Yeah, but you got to have that upfront um, right. investment. But we want to do more of that. So more of that. We want a half a side of like a, a half a side of beef broken mm-hmm. down into cuts. Yeah. And I'm. Uh, we can't really process it ourselves, but no, no. I'm uh, setting aside money so that so that can be next in a few months. We can do that, but it's a lot. That's it, a it's lot. A, it's a lot. It's a chunk of change, and of course, if you do that, then you know you're not spending it. It's an upfront cost, uh, right? It's an upfront cost. The price per pound is considerably lower. No, to prep yeah. for that, though, we actually need to deep clean our outside of the garage freezer got to frost the freezer and get it ready it's a huge mess yeah which means that we'll have to yeah that's going to be a whole day of work at least yeah. maybe overnight and then to yeah. the next day yeah absolutely um, it'll be a whole thing it's yeah a whole thing. and we also have to um we have to pitch some stuff that's in there now uh like just trays and trays of herbs that i froze in, oh. in 20 2018, 2019. 2019. Maybe even been 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we're not eating. Uh, that we're not getting to. It's like not happening. They're, they're, that's the thing. When you grow herbs, you have suddenly so many herbs. You couldn't possibly eat That them. you can't figure out what to do with them I, all. I think to some extent we should, um, as far as herbs and like keeping them and like using them instead of just composting them. Yeah. Um, we should get in the habit of brewing up herbs to drink every day. Herb t- herbal tea, of herbal tea every day. Oh, the lemon verbena is so good that it's way. It's divine. It's absolutely And the mint sublime. is great too. The ch- different uh, mints. And I, I've gotten a real soft spot for oregano and thyme as well. As teas. teas, yeah. You can do it. It's a little unusual. Thy- yeah. Thyme has a supposedly some real health benefits as far as strengthening your lung function and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and oregano is really good for your immune system. Okay. So 
But so, it, yeah. it does taste unusual if you're not used to it. Right. It's a different flavor. It's not like, yeah. you know, what is it, yeah. Celestial Seasonings? Right. Bag, uh, so. The it, one it's... that I really liked and would actually give people little bags of was you take um, the chocolate mint leaves and mm. you mix them with black tea. And That's you have really good. like a black tea with chocolate mint flavorings. It's delicious. It's delicious. Yes. But uh, so that's meat. Um, I'm checking out Randazzo's uh, Fruit Market, another local establishment. They've been around also since I think either the early 50s, late 40s. Yeah. And they deliver and have been delivering to Southeast Michigan since the 50s. Um, so they have the, that's the thing with. Calders and whatnot, they already have the infrastructure. They're already in your neighborhood. They're, yeah, they're in our neighborhood anyway. We're not far. No, so. they, d- they deliver weekly to the corner. Right. Right. So, you know, the like um, the extra fuel is sort of spread out between all of you who are all buying. All the customers who are buying. Right. And, and also, their supply chain is hyper-local. Yes. They raise all the cows that they sell the milk from. Yeah. And, um, and prioritize locally grown um everything everything else right so the stuff they sell they're all like michigan products right, right. um you know bakeries in detroit etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. yeah so and similarly with randazzo's if you're from if you're from the area you know that name um they've been delivering they have a huge fruit and vegetable market and have been delivering fruits and vegetables to restaurants homes and right. wholesalers since the 50s so again they've got a whole distribution network set up um and they've been through various fuel crises and right. continued to deliver. Right. So, if yeah, they'll probably go electric at some point too. Maybe they'll have their own solar chargers. You know, whatever. You know, who knows? Whatever. Who knows? But it, the thing is, we don't know what's coming. Right. Or rather, we do know what's coming, yeah. and we know it's going to be pretty bad. But it yeah. is these distribution networks Places and these supply are, chains that are more resilient. That are more resilient. They have an existing market, customer base, existing processes, they right. own their means of production. Because the thing you don't actually want to do is try and reinvent the wheel now in a crisis. Yeah. Right? So, um, as so, much as I've really valued curbside delivery from these large box stores, yeah. I don't want to, like, suggest that that's, like, some bad thing. It's been a godsend for me. Well, it's uh, something yeah. that we're that we've considered to be a bit of a necessary evil. I don't actually want to support any of these app-based gig economy sort oh, of things yeah, no, like Instacart and uh, Instacart. Uber and all this. These are shit for their, their workers. It's shit for everybody, honestly. Um, shit for everybody. And they, they, yeah, they, they take away jobs from, like, you know, potentially union jobs from, from people from, for delivery drivers. Well, and, and so, whatnot. just to be clear, um, we, I was trying to not right. use Costco at all. Right. Because they only use Instacart, they won't do any kind of curbside. Right. And the only way to get the things that Costco sells is to walk into the store or use Instacart. Right. That's the only option. Um, the other things have le- a little bit less of that. Like um, Sam's Club. Sam's some, Club does curbside. They do curbside. stuff out to your car. Their employees with the sort of broad general protection of employee of the employee relationship. Right. Um, package of stuff, bring it to the car, do the whole job. GFS does this all the time. GFS does it all the time. Target does it all the time. Target does it all the time. Meyer does it all the time. Right. Right? Um, but the larger um, the larger externalities of these box, the box store model... I, I want to point out that for a number of these, they don't charge anything extra. Oh, yeah, there's no extra so for, like... So, like, when you order from price. Target, you pay online, you just drive up, you park in a pickup space, they come out and... St- Put stuff your, the stuff in the back of your car. No it. extra charge. No extra, same with Meyer. Same with GFS. Uh, right. Um, whereas Costco, Sam's Instacart too. is like Sam's too. Yeah. There's all the prices are like. That, it's that's a separate menu. It's a separate menu with separate prices, and they're more. And a limited su- product supply that they can easily adjust or manage and adjust and manage to, right. for delivery. So. Yeah. So it is pricier. It's not. I. We're not. Um, Grace, you're trying to emphasize that we're not trying to shame anyone who uses Instacart a lot or whatnot. Oh, no. A lot of people have no better options. There's nothing else to do. If there is a better option, we really try to use it. We try to use the better option. But we we go with Costco sometimes because there are things that really only only can find or only can easily get. (laughs) Right. There's a a short list of things 
that are only there. Right. The hands down, bar none, best price, best flavor, best quality ingredients of oat milk mm-hmm. is Costco and nowhere else. We've tried so many. It's literally twice the price yeah. for less quality ingredients yeah. anywhere else. And we've tried so many. Right. It's so very frustrating. It's this ridiculous thing. I mean, the only way we could get something cheaper and of better quality would be to make our own oat milk. Right. And let me just say that I'm not in that place right now in my life. That's, That's not where I am right maybe now. Maybe someday. Um, maybe someday, but not today. Yeah. So all that said, the the I was trying to talk about the big box store bottle. Yeah. It's extraordinarily yeah. fragile. Yeah. It's extra. I mean, even. Well, we remember how weird it was early in the pandemic and even fairly even a year later in the pandemic yes to go into costco and see the meat s- section just empty empty right just like, like empty or or just filled with other stuff or even just sort of covered up with like a sheet or something right there's nothing it's there very weird the, nothing was in there was not going to be not going to be anything in right um the the, the pipeline was dry was dry so a lot of these box store models have these um, fragile points in them. Yeah. And, and really, if you hit enough of the fragile points, the whole store goes down. <laughs> okay. But, um, that, and that has not happened yet. Right. And that has not happened yet. Right. Um, but you have the things that people buy the most of are suddenly just not there. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually, and that's at all of them. Target, Sam's Club, Meyer, Target, uh, um, Costco, all mm-hmm. of them have this, this problem. Right. Whereas the externalities in these local distribution systems um, have their fragile points. Mm-hmm. And believe me, gasoline is a very a fragile, fragile point. point. Absolutely. So I don't mean to underestimate that or dismiss yeah. that as, as part of the reality. We're not, we haven't been talking that much about inflation. Inflation but and fossil fuels. Believe me, we are well aware of, well how, aware of it. how much more expensive food has gotten uh, right. across the board, pretty much. No, it is, it's but surreal, honestly. We, but we did have a model for, we were trying for a while to buy in much larger quantities from restaurant supply places in, yes. in um, uh, uh, Eastern Market. Oh, yes, yes. And it was... Um, it's really hard. It's, it's, it's a hard. long drive. It's a long drive. Some of the things we just wouldn't get to, and we had... Uh, a lot more spoilage than I was comfortable with. A lot you know, of spoilage and the quality of some of this bulk food was really It was actually not that good. It was kind of disappointing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Um, well, like, yeah, if you want to go buy 100 pounds of potatoes, I mean... The, yeah, bad. This <laughs> or was the carrots. <laughs> well, 100 pounds of potatoes and carrots. And those are... And there's some... There's a short list of things right. that are perfect for this, right? Right, right? You can buy 100 pounds of potatoes. You can buy a, a, just a shit ton of carrots, right? Yeah. 15, 30 pounds. Yeah. You can buy... Um, Cabbage is good like this. Yeah. Beets are good like this. Right. Um, Probably celery and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Celery, celery less than, but also good. Onions yeah. also good. Yeah. But celery and onions are just a little bit more finicky yeah. than those other things. Yeah. Um, but we we bought some of those things and That's, largely enjoyed it. But we tried to get seafood and it was not. What was it that was like none no. of it was good as the chicken? We got some chicken. It was very low priced, but and it was restaurant supply. This huge, yeah, big supplier. But it was it was fishy. Wings. No, we got the thighs, thighs, thighs and legs, like the two oh, okay. leg yeah. quarters. That's what right. they call them, leg quarters. And, no, it tasted bad. Yeah, it was not, and we, and they weren't trimmed up. They still have the backs on them, which yeah. I don't mind. Everyone else did. <laughs> they were a well, bit tedious to eat. Yeah, they're tedious to eat, and normally we would want to put the work in to finish prepping them. Right, right. But um, no, it was just, just it, it, nobody really. But the Someone big thing it. was the flavor. That was flavor was not actually good. Not good. That was yeah. Literally yeah. fishy. L- literally fishy flavor, fishy tasting. So um, similar to the eggs that we got occasionally that would be, taste bad, like they were feeding them fish meal or something. Right, they were fishy tasting garbage. eggs. Yeah. So. Um, Many of these things that are more localized, the parts of the chain are more responsive and more, uh, frankly, integrated. Mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, one meatpacking plant with poor policies can take down... In Ohio or with, even you know, in Nebraska or right, wherever. Can suddenly mean there's no pork for 30 states. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Whereas... 
Uh, that's not what's going because on. Because they threw a, a, among the hundred cows that they threw into one giant batch, they threw a contaminated one. And, well, uh, or they, they're they're not using any kind of policies to prevent illness amongst the workers. Oh, right. So they had or there's, everyone's out sick. So everyone's out dead. sick or dead or um, maimed. Right. Um, like, like there's so many things yes. that they can really yeah. that should be basic decency right um but one one of those wrenches can, can bring down the pork the beef the whatever for 30 states yeah. yeah um and this is much less so like that and also because of the nature of these systems and the fact that the individuals running them um live and die on their functionality mm -hmm. uh they're actually keen for the whole situation not to go belly up so that they don't end up with everyone out sick at once. They don't yes. end up in some ridiculous situation right. where they just can't fill orders. They can't meet their obligations. Right. Right. Um, whereas, honestly, for a lot of those meatpacking plants that they take down three throw, states... They just throw employees through the... Through the well, and as far know. as they're concerned, this is just a write-off. Right. This whole screw-up is a write-off. They're eating today. Right. right. And they're not ill. Right. And this is a write-off. There's no... Right. Really, there's, there's, there's no downside for them, for this to happen. So they have no incentive to prevent these kinds of events from occurring. Even killing employees. Even know, up with, to and including outbreaks. In, in killing employees. So, or maiming, like you described. Right. So this, um, so this, I don't really want to call it more humane, exactly. Uh -huh. It's still capitalism. Wanna, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, it's still capitalism. I don't want to like moralize about you know, what people are eating. It's not a gift economy. It's not a gift economy. It's not, you know... It's not some anarchist utopia or something. It's draining our lifeblood to pay for all this shit. Uh, absolutely. But it's a little more resilient. And actually, that's that's the thing I keep coming back to. It's a little more resilient because I need to make sure my children eat every day. Yeah. And yeah. that's actually the reason, the, the whole point of it is to make, keep, my, keep an eye towards making sure they're fed every day. Um, so, uh, so, we're thinking about rondazzos for winter, winter vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about... Um, I don't know about Webstaurant. It's really it reminds me of the box store model. They're not that. The prices aren't really that great. Not that good. Yeah, I'm not. I really would good. go to Webstaurant to get um, to get some pans. Like, yeah, there's there's stuff I would buy there. It's true. Yeah, I want to I want to get um, some a couple of nice carbon steel pans at some point because mm -hmm. the cast iron is great, but it doesn't work great for absolutely everything. Not for everything. No. Yeah. And uh, and you know, and local meat. And what was the other thing? There was something else. Oh, there's, there are these things that the liberals do that aren't uh, aren't all bad. Mm -hmm. They've got a, like a local food food hub where people can get veggies and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think their pricing model and their uh, volume model is based on a much smaller family than ours. Yeah. So, so basically, like, they're there, and you can get local veg, hyper local vegetables year round. But you know, we're talking about hundreds of dollars a week to feed yeah. nine people vegetables. It doesn't feel like a family of nine should be that far outside the norm. But if you look at like the contemporary stats, we're like in the one percent. Yeah, you know? that's fair. One percenters here. Yeah, you know, look at us. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. So I, I don't want to like wholly dismiss those models. Just because it doesn't meet our needs, but it is a thing that's available locally right. for smaller families, singles, couples, etc. Um, but yeah, I think we'd need two or three of their um, shares of their shares yeah. to to get yeah. our needs met. And you know what? Well, I'm exaggerating. We, it's not. It wouldn't be hundreds of dollars a week, but it would be, I think, like eighteen hundred dollars or something to get a, a yeah. share. We have in the used winter. we have used CSAs in the past and. They've been a mixed bag. It's we mixed sometimes bag. have extremely high quality food, but it's usually not enough of the stuff that we really like in season, and you know, mm -hmm. and and then yeah, we dealt with one place where the guy it was a vegan and refused to use any animal inputs, <laughs> so yeah, like fertilized with poop because that exploits the animals or some. That, you know, that was small. Yeah. That was his philosophy. It's I did not share it. Let's just say that much. And um, and the vegetables. Everything was measly and not great. Yeah. Um, so, but you've also uh, we're I'm starting to get antsy to go home because we have a bunch of food. we have 
formerly frozen food in the back <laughs> and some meats and stuff. Yes, yes. But um, we should get that uh, into our freezers in, in and fridge. fridge. But um, I wanted to ask before we wind up, you had mentioned some bulk items that you had talked about as like last ditch backup foods. Oh, yeah. So like when, when everything's really broken down, we're still going to need to eat. I still have to feed these children. Right. And so we, we maintain a lot of brown rice. We order nice brown rice from not, uh, Lundgren. Not Lundgren, not Lundberg. Lundberg. Lundberg or Lundgren? Whatever it is, that place in California. Lund you know that hippie place in Northern California? They grow rice. With the lungs. Yeah, and the lungs, <laughs> and they like this low arsenic, that one. I, oh, anyway, ah. um, I forget which one is which. Lundberg or Lundgren. But, Whatever um, the hell it is. But you know what I'm talking about. We also get some very nice cocoa and chocolate from um, Guitard. Guitard, and we do bulk orders a few times a year. One, it's in the cool season for shipping, and then. Um, but you, we get a lot of pasta. Um, you can, oh yeah, if you buy big enough bags, pasta is quite inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. Even very nice quality pasta. Um, but you had mentioned. Um, like the real backup for when the shits hit the fan and nothing's moving and nothing's available for weeks. For weeks. And or months. And um, one of the things you had looked into was TVP. I guess it was TVP, which it, actually I made a. a so I call it the survival pantry. So maybe you might think of it as the shit hits the fan pantry. Yeah. So I, this no, is granted. I, I've had like TVP chili, and that's not that bad. I think it know? tastes great. I think it's fine. It's okay. But I think. To get a non GMO TVP yeah. in 2023 is as much as buying meat. Uh, that's, it is the same price per pound, it's even the, in bulk. the only nice thing about it is that it's shelf stable longer. It is shelf stable longer than than beef. Yeah. Um, and which you can dehydrate actually. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at that price, uh, maybe I should get dehydrated. You know, right. Free range beef, because G GMO free. It's either organic or like specially grown, but not yeah. GMO free TVP is um, really it's like three five dollars a pound, three yeah. to five dollars a pound. Yeah. Whereas like the the industrial soybean TVP, this is suggests that non GMO is an industrial. Just to be clear, sure. Um, well, it's this is a highly processed food. It's a it's a highly processed food. Um, that stuff is like a like ninety nine cents to a buck fifty a pound. It's a really cheap, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really easy to stock uh, protein mm -hmm. and uh, a vegan protein, and you, it allows you to stretch any meat tremendously because it takes on yeah. flavor so well and it's seasoned so well. It's it's a yeah. I think it's a good food. It's a nice filler for chili or whatever. It's not bad. I've, I've enjoyed bad. it in the past. But, but at that price, I'll use oatmeal. Yeah. Oatmeal is also good for that. Yeah, honestly, there's some. Um, there's some other stuff that I that's considered vegan, and we're not actually vegan, but we certainly don't oh, we mind like, we eating don't these like, things. We, we like a lot of vegan foods, mm -hmm. and some of these are. One of them is also quite expensive when you look into it. Yes, and it's tempeh. Tempeh or seitan. A seitan, yeah. yeah, and also delicious and maybe of use, but not when you're trying to. Like find the cost-effective protein the cost -effective for protein, a large no. family. The thing that I this this is the sort of like um, thing in that space that I did find that I think would be popular with our children is um, if you get the fourteen percent protein um, flours, mm -hmm. those are very those are relatively easy to turn into into satan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it's not you it's it's not that hard to make. it's not that hard to make. It's like making. Um, uh, farmer farm cheese. Yeah, yeah. It's not right. that hard to make, and it's kind of a fun project. I know Benjamin will be <laughs> all over it. Yeah, because you gotta get your hands in it and squish. And you fry it. Yeah, and you, and you slice it up, fry it up, and you're good Whatever. to go. So that's actually um, on the list. I tell you, well, that's on the list uh, among other things. But no, no, the, the, just stay with me the whole way, okay? Yeah. So sorry. I keep... What I actually did was I looked at so what would be like ten, ten or twelve things. That are one of the cheapest things I could buy in a typical box store in mm -hmm. bulk. Like, in other words, they're just everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can get these in any place. You can get it at the dollar store. This, well, uh, like, yeah, which. Okay. 
And remember, Only this, in an emergency. This is the shit hits the fan pantry. Yeah, That's yeah, what this is. Yeah. This is not like our preferred food. This is the shit hits the fan pantry. Right. This is calories so we all survive until things are better. And this is the list in order of price. Mm -hmm. Cheapest thing, cheapest 2,000 calories you can get is actually lard. So lard, followed by rice, mm -hmm. followed by sugar. Mm. And now this is funny. Pancake mix is cheaper than flour. Interesting. Yes. Why would that be? I, you know, there's so many industrial it's agriculture weird, reasons it's for weird, that. Weird uh, economy of scale. It's an econ yeah. weird economy of scale thing. So pancake mix is cheaper than flour. Okay. Peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Beans. We eat a lot of peanut butter, by the way. Yeah. But we have become spoiled oh, by getting so all, spoiled. only. We only really like Co Coatsy brand um, peanut, butter? peanut butter. Yeah. And, <laughs> The GFS has crunchy and smooth cozy peanut butter. It's mm -hmm. quite expensive. And, yes, um, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good, and um, once you really don't want to go back. No, you don't. You can't eat GFS after you've had this. Good God, you, you but, can't. <laughs> um, but it's only. It's not always available. Like they've been out available. of stock for the last month. And, you know, we know that we're pretty confident that they do like seasonal batches yes and so it'll come back at some it'll point be back. but we'll, we'll stock up as we can but mm -hmm. we also this week we are trying well we've had costco peanut butter in the past and it's never any good it's not it's actually really not good it's not good like worse than worse than like Jeff anything else yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's just not it doesn't taste good um so we're trying uh trying sam's, sam's club peanut butter see what happens um, How bad could it be? Oh, it could be pretty could be bad. bad. Yeah. So peanut butter, beans, beans, and, and again, this doesn't make sense. Right. Brownie mix. Brownie mix is cheaper than pasta. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Okay. And then pasta. Yeah. Then tortilla chips. Yeah. Then tuna. Yeah. Tuna is yeah. super cheap. Well, and these we, are things we that we get the 60, 66 ounce. Oh, like so, yeah, 66 ounce cans of tuna. Of tuna. They're huge. And that can will make enough to have, like, tuna salad with pasta or with greens as a dinner. Mm -hmm. And then people have a few, a few lunches. sandwiches the next day right. or whatnot. So really, that's like a meal and, and leftovers for us. It's two. It's really two meals if you stretch if you, it properly. If you stretch it properly, it's two meals. But if you don't really manage it, it's a meal and, and leftovers. And a little leftovers. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's like the, the, the cheapest things we could get. They can get us like calories. Yeah. Right. And, and calories do, and protein. We do stock the tuna. I'm a big fan of the tuna. Right. But I don't want it every day, you know. No, but not every day. You can alternate with beans in this list. And also the tuna changes flavor. It does. Yeah, it does. It's a little wild. Even, even the big brands like Starkist or whatnot. Yeah. They'll have some flavors that are like, huh. Like this week's can is... That's, this is weird. This is weird. Weird, a little different. A little different. Um, and then there were things that I think we need to have in our pantry so that we are, um, how shall I say, so the food is still joyful and delicious, even if it's, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it is. Um, salt, olive oil, vinegar, and dehydrated vegetables. So, note, everything here is self-stable. Yeah, well, we also go through a... Uh, quite a lot of hot sauce <laughs> quite a lot of hot sauce so i didn't um, hot sauce is not honestly here. if you're going to survive not just survive but but thrive on beans and rice fundamentally you need hot sauce. you've got to have some yeah, kind true. of smoked pork flavoring or smoke flavoring or smoked you know or yes um hock or something some, to flavor it with and then you also want a, a hot sauce of some kind hot sauce. and then i had like coffee oat milk and nooch like i don't know i don't know maybe do i want to put them i don't know maybe we eat it those kids really like nutritional yeast and it's they love loaded it. with b vitamins yeah. and they'll they'll make pasta with it all the time all the time so, so we have to ration it actually. right so the things that aren't quite that aren't quite on here like where are uh, the because flour, really good flour, because this is the thing, if you're going to be making bread and making sutan, you want the best flour money can buy. Yeah, for us that's... For longevity and for flavor and right. for nutrition. Around here, that's probably King Arthur. It is. Of different types, you know. Like, mm -hmm. it's really good. Um, right. But so high-protein flour. And, and, and that's, not, that's it. Absolutely not these brands like gold medal and whatnot that... Tastes rancid and bad from the. Tastes rancid and bad out of the out of the bag. Yeah. They taste rancid out of the bag, but the um, but a lot of these other sort of um, 
uh, like King Arthur's really reliably pretty good. Mm -hmm. And when you get their larger bat batches, they're usually they're actually usually fresher. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you get like the big twenty-five pound bag that was right. probably packed within the a last month. month. It's because it's sold to restaurants and they go right. through it. And they go through it and they move through it. Bakeries. Right. Yeah. Whereas like the stuff they put on the shelf in stores, it may have been storage for a while. It may have yeah. been in a warehouse for a while. Yeah. And get to you six nine months later after it's been. Same milled. thing with Bob's Red Mill stuff. Mm -hmm. They like their oatmeal. They're they're labeled. The they like package this like. Um, Steel cut oats with a mm -hmm. sell by date that's two years after. Two years out from. It's only really good tasting for six months. For about six months, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's largely what we're thinking about, and these keeping these things that are um, shelf stable that really are safe to, and it less, there's less about flavor, but safe to eat for at least a year. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, sure, the steel cutouts is safe for a year. It's just a little better yeah. if you get to it quicker than that, but it um, doesn't mm -hmm. go bad, bad. No, no, no. But the flavor is less. Yeah. yeah. So those things, I think, will are keep enough variety in our diet to stop a riot, <laughs> and, um, and enough nutrition, yeah. just basic, really, calories. So no one is actually uh, suffering from yeah. a, a loss of calories. We don't really have what we could use for storage, which is something akin to a root cellar that's cool around the clock. Yeah, that would be the ideal thing. Our storage now is in our it's utility tough. room on these very nice, expensive stainless steel shelves that we installed that are like food service food shelves. Yeah, food service. Very s solid and nice. We'll probably, you know, never wear them out. <laughs> We're not, yeah, the potters are not going to wear those out. Right. Um, and... Uh, but it's in the room with the the boiler. And, yeah, that's a warm room. And some things just probably aren't lasting as long. What they could. Even the canned goods are not. As la yeah. Are not staying as fresh as they would in a, a cooler space. A cooler space. But we don't have a cooler space. Nope. Really anywhere. No, not really. Because the garage is it's it's hot no. in the summer and freezing in the winter. Yeah, we could. Um, we could put food storage in the far corner of the basement. Mm -hmm. um, we might consider that right, we might eventually. Consider that. We'll but see. anyway, but now what it comes down to is um, what we can do with what we have right now right. to make sure right. people eat. In because I I don't know how to uh, sugarcoat this. I wish I was better at sugarcoating. Ugh. I'm not, but I think things are going to get pretty fucked up pretty fast. In the, in the near term. A lot of things are going pear-shaped. They yeah. call it exponential change. Yeah, not 10 years. And the exponential function starts out kind of a slow, gentle curve, and then goes a lot, <laughs> fast, a lot faster. Yeah, so so I don't, I'm not talking 10 years from now. No. I, I'm talking more like two years from now. Yeah, and if um, you're thinking, some truly chaotic. Oh, yeah, and if you're thinking like, Oh, sure, by 2050, we might break the 1.5 degrees C. Yeah. It's like, actually, that's happened. Yeah. They're just, it's just not we're not discussing it. distributed and we're not discussing it. Right. But that's happened. That's we've... happened and we're not discussing it. So, so I'm, I'm expecting that. And that's, and I know uh, preppers have been expecting things to come for a long time. Well, and that's the beauty of prepping. It's, right. it's beneficial. It doesn't matter exactly what when it goes happens. wrong. It doesn't matter what goes wrong. It doesn't matter when it happens, but right. you're prepared for right. unexpected things. But we're, Yeah, we're preparing for different things. We have very different philosophies, but we're, the outcome is probably going to be similar. We hope. Similar, yeah. So, yeah. the shit at the fan, the, the, the survival pantry, is yeah. for multiple supply system breakdowns across all sectors, even hyper-localized sectors, yeah. where we really might have to shelter in place for an extended right. period of time and continue to eat. And, you know, what we really hope is that as our... If we can avoid constant reinfection and hope for some decent treatments or at least recovery, right. that we will be able to get back to growing more of our own actual... More of our own. Food. Some, some of the food. We're never gonna. I don't expect that we'll ever get to the point where like we can make enough grain to store. You know. Oh no! And I think it's a bit of a myth. So it, it, you it, might be set entirely yeah. self-sufficient. The only way this would ever happen for us, I think, is if like um, 
a, a two million dollars fell out of the sky and landed on our accounts, <laughs> and I could be like, oh great, this is our retirement, and I'm retiring today. I'm going to be a quarter-time science fiction writer, and the rest of the time I'm going to spend as a hobby gardener. And the number's ten million, but yes. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, some. It would be enough. Comically large to, sum of money to pay right. off the house and live for the rest of my planned lifespan. Right. And you know, doing something. And mm -hmm. but yes, ideally to set us up, um, like with enough savings that everyone is taken care of, including our disabled, our children with disabilities. Yeah. Um, that number. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's more like ten million. It's more like ten. It might but, more like ten million. But um, for to free up basically all my time from the, having to work for an employer, right, is less. But um, so yeah, and then yeah. we would be trying to grow like flint corn. And yeah, flint we'd corn. We'd be putting in a, a little greenhouse. We've got a spot picked out. We'd be able to hire a little bit of landscaping assistance, right, to like finish the job of setting up our hugel culture and other beds and all right. that because even 10 years it's ago when we were really much younger and much healthier <laughs> we, hired we hired somebody to we help. hired a guy to help with a lot of this land moving. setup right and i did an awful lot of shoveling and i did stuff with chainsaws and all that but yeah can't really do that these we're not days. quite in that space these days no. so right. let's wrap it let's, let's wrap it yeah. thanks for listening i know this one went long but um they all go long the well, last time was uh, 56 minutes. Oh, that's short so, for us. That was relatively short, but remember I had to end it because I had 40 seconds left on the recorder. Don't! <laughs> I was like, Don't. noticing that I had like no time left. No time left. But, uh, yeah, this thing eats batteries, too. It's really yeah. weird. Um, but, yeah, we got to get home. We're having our movie night. Um, we just, uh, real quick, we got in the mail... A Blu-ray set of a TV show called Fringe, which is sort of a a British version of the X Files. Oh, and I'm curious about it. What's I've heard that? both good and bad things. I've heard that like season one is kind of bad, but it gets much more interesting as it goes on. Right. As it goes on, so we might give that a shot and see. We're also we're watching a series called The Years of Living Dangerously on DVD. Yeah, that was a Showtime series a few years back. I think 2017. It's already been superseded, but mm -hmm. the idea, the concepts of what's happening with climate change are still spot on um it's just a little out of date you know yeah and this is our sort of gentle introduction for the kids uh, the older kids to truly understand the scale of what we're up against right um yeah but then i think i've had this movie in our library for a long time waiting but i think we're going to put on a film called bamboozled by spike lee um, yeah which is quite a strange film, it. but it's about um, basically some characters that decide to create a modern-day TV show that is modeled after old-timey minstrel shows and has yes. them wearing blackface and doing vaudeville kind of minstrelsy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's deeply horrific and offensive, but that's the point. That's the point. It's, it's wildly popular. Is to yeah, it becomes wildly popular, and the producers then have to, the guy that founds it then has to face up to his culpability in spreading and propagating these ancient harmful stereotypes. Yes, it's, it's sort of like if you were doing a, uh, it's it's the anti-Semitic news hour, right? Yay! You know? Today, how international Jewry is, you know, like, uh, is George Soros coming into your home late at night and drinking your blood? News at 11. 11. <laughs> right, it's a little bit like that. It's but, a little bit of that, But yeah. this is a catalyst for discussion. It's kind of a weak movie in some ways. Oh, it's, it's a pretty weak long movie. and weird. Yeah. But it has these really wonderful tap dance sequences in it as well. Yes, yes. And that kind of... Makes it makes better. up for a lot of shortcomings. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, the, the dance sequences are good. So we're hoping to uh, 
to have some really good discussion about racial stereotypes and Americana and how these things are still entirely embedded in our culture, our culture. everywhere and you look and yeah. normalized. Yeah, yeah. And if we could, we would take the kids to the um, Jim Crow Museum of Racist Memorabilia. Yeah. That, that may not be the exact name of it. It's close. It's close to it. It's, you can probably Google it. It's um, just, just Google Jim Crow Museum, and it's across the state. Um, it's like in Grand Rapids or something? I think so, or yeah. near there. Um, and there's a faculty member who got this going. There's also a website for mm -hmm. it. But it's fascinating and grim. And I think you have to schedule tours. Yeah. It's not like uh, they don't just want, like... Uh, High school groups coming through uh, randomly. <laughs> <laughs> like learning how to be hey kids were taking a field trip to learn how to be even more racist you know yeah. that's but it's for scholars and select like i'm sure a lot of homeschoolers you know yeah, yeah. but uh, i hope i would like to see it someday i'd like the kids to see it um yeah. someone i'm really glad that someone is collecting these artifacts in a museum setting right. where there's teaching materials surrounding it right. rather than just like on your neighbor's lawn on your neighbor's lawn yeah although do we still see lawn jockeys and shit like that oh yeah one of our neighbors put up like a totem pole recently oh god it's yeah it just really anyway well yeah as soon as i saw the like the flags, the BLM flags, I'm like, oh, this neighbor's gone to hell. <laughs> great. <laughs> not because... Just great. <laughs> not because you disagree with their purported aims, but because it's it, that, full of liberals. That, that, those flags mean one thing. Uh, and it, <laughs> it's not good. And it's not really good. It's it's like... It's, it's like, like that performative uh, thing. That performative, you know. Well, it's thing. it's like putting the sign on your door that says "We gave," <laughs> you know, gave. like we did all we can be expected to did do. You? Don't bug us. Don't bug us about anything else. Right. By the way, I think I need to call the cops. I saw some weird-looking kids. Yeah, <laughs> they were casing the joint. That's, yeah. yeah, that's what those signs mean. I mean, really. Okay. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Talk soon. Bye bye.